just come and just be a servant of the Lord. And also, I would like to announce Sunday only, attention parents. <laughs> a reminder that all children ages eight and older should remain with their parents during the service until otherwise noted. So that's in bold, so hopefully you're listening. <laughs> and then it also says, as a reminder, all children are to be taken downstairs by their parent and guardian and sign in. Children should never be unescorted, so make sure that your children are escorted, please. <laughs> As special emphasis on that. And children will not be accepted after 11.30, so please get them here before that. So there's no interruption of the service that's going on down there because it's not just kids running around, they're hearing the word and that's really important so we don't want to interrupt that. And lastly, if your child is not being served downstairs, please do not have your breakfast or your lunch, whatever you're doing downstairs or a casual conversation, please take that outside because it is a disruption. And with that, I would like to move on with the service. Yeah. Our own Larry Williams will be ministering the word to us today. And it's always an anointed word, so we look forward to hearing that. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. I forgot to mention our pastors. So. Oh. Good evening, everyone. How are you doing? What I'd like to do is start off, first of all, by going to Yahweh in prayer. So if you could just on, join with me. Hallelujah. We thank you. We praise you, Yahweh. We know where two or three are gathered. There you are in the midst. And we know that there is an anointing on your word. Therefore, we want your word to go forth. I just thank you that you lead me and guide me in all wisdom and truth. We thank you that you watch over your word to make sure it prospers where it was sent, where it accomplishes what it was sent to do and prosper where it was sent. We hide your word in our heart that we might not sin against you. We thank you that everyone here will have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive your truth. And we give the Holy Spirit free course to flow through this service right now in the precious name of Yeshua HaMashiach. We know you will confirm your word with signs and wonders following. Amen. Amen. Well, 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 here we are again. What I wanted to do is just kind of uh, start out by just uh, sharing with you uh, kind of a mindset and a change that I, I seem to be going through. We have some uh, visitors here, so what I'm, when I talk, I'm going to be talking about something. We have a discipleship program called My Deeper Life, and what My Deeper Life is helping us to get in rhythm with Yahweh, so that way we're where we need to be, when we need to be there, doing the things we need to do so we can be blessed. And this is how we're growing and how we're able to reach this, uh, this world through um, the discipleship program that Pastor Dan has set up. And one of the things that um, Pastor Dan did is back on Sunday, after a master class, he texted me and asked me would I be available to, um, to speak this evening. And the first thing that went through my head was the week that I had. I have, um, I think on Monday, I had an important meeting at work, which is gonna determine pretty much where I'm gonna go uh, in my career. Then Thursday, it was an office party. Friday, we have the function here, and I'm going to be cooking for 50 people. Then Sunday, uh, Saturday, my, my sister is in a play, and she wants us to come out to Jersey and then stay for the after party. So needless to say, when I saw this text, first thing I want to do is disqualify myself. First thing I had going through my head is all the reasons why I would not be able to speak here this evening. Although I got over that because I'm standing here. But, but what was interesting is I, I reflected back on what Pastor Dan was talking about on Sunday. And this is really what encouraged me because he didn't talk a lot about it, but he talked about rhythm. And, and that really stuck in my spirit about rhythm. One of the things he was saying is, is he gave the analogy of a sports team. He said, when the sports team, uh, I think it was the Charlotte Hornets, when they were not in rhythm, they were doing terrible. They couldn't hit a bucket. But then all of a sudden, one game they had, they were in rhythm. And they beat the team, I think, by 20, or they had a 60% shooting average. And the question was, how did you do it? And one of the things that the gentleman said was, we were all in rhythm. So the second thing he said on Sunday was, when you're being called by Yahweh, you start facing your sins. Now, when we say sins, we're not always talking about sins you go out and commit adultery and everything, but the sin of unbelief. The sin of not believing that Yahweh can deliver. And that's what I saw myself confronting. Because he told me, you got this. But I was thinking of all the reasons why. And the first thing I said is, okay, I know I need to get into reading a little bit more. And really get into the daily discipline of reading every single day. And the first thing that came is, if you had been reading every day and putting all this time in, you'd be ready. 
But what Yahweh said is, I can do things if you just fellowship with me. You don't need a lot of time. So what he started showing me as I started looking at the rhythm, I went back to the My Deeper Life manual and I started reading over rhythm just to get an, a, a fuller context of what rhythm meant. And then again, just how he has, has me on a technical note, I went to this one Bible tool that I had which does a topical search of the Bible and it starts breaking down every single chapter and it tells you what each verse means and then what started jumping out is all the verses that were dealing with rhythm. So what Yahweh was able to do is get me right back into rhythm but he showed me a new way of beginning to go through the daily reading not just to read through the, 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 the books and then get to the end and say how does this tie in with what we're doing, but he showed me how to be purposeful, how to pursue it, how to seek, how to press into the anointing and ask some specific questions and pull out of, uh, out of the word what is going on in my life. And in this point right now, we're gonna talk a little bit about rhythm. So I just wanted to give you kind of a little context of where I started out. And one of the things Pastor said on Sunday is rhythm is one of the most important things. And the reason why rhythm is so important because rhythm requires that we follow instructions. And that's some place that we always get challenged, following instruction. Just as simple as, like you said, reading the books and don't read uh, that, that are for that month and don't read outside of those books. One of the things he said in the, in the tool book was that when you do that, you slow the team down. When you do that, you take away from the team. So uh, I started thinking a little bit more about that. And then he also mentioned sometimes you have to slow down to speed up. What I found myself doing is because I wasn't getting into my daily reading, I'm a night person. I tend to stay up at night and do a lot of things in the evening as Paige is shaking her head, yeah. And then I try to get up in the morning. My wife is a morning person. She'll get up at four o'clock. She'll get before Yahweh, do all she needs to do. I was up late last night to almost two o'clock doing whatever. And now I'm trying to get out of bed and it's just not as easy. So one of the things Yahweh started showing me is why don't you prepare? Why don't you get in rhythm the night before? So when you get out of bed, you're already in rhythm. You already have your, your the, the nine, we talked about fruit of the spirit. You already have your spirit picked out, the verse of scripture that you're going to be rehearsing. Everything is in place. So what he's showing me is maybe the way Valerie gets in rhythm may not be the way I need to get in rhythm. I might need to get in rhythm at night. She gets in rhythm. But the important part is get in rhythm. Because see, Yahweh has a rhythm to everything. And when we're out of rhythm, he was talking about just like a sports team, we're out of balance. We take off balance shots. We're not where we need to be. And sometimes, and I've seen it happen many times, you've got two people on you and you can't really shoot the ball but because you don't trust your, your teammates, you're going to force a shot anyway and cause a turnover. But when you're in rhythm with Yahweh, you, you have balance. When you're in rhythm with Yahweh, you're where you need to be, when you need to be, and you're making good decisions. Another thing about being in rhythm with Yahweh, which is what I'm starting to learn now, and I'm starting to see it in my life as a transition moves, is this rhythm is creating an environment where we're developing leaders, where we're starting to take a different mindset. Me personally, because I was, like I said, a little out of balance uh, as I was talking at the master class, I was focused on one area of the spumessive, and then when I started looking at the entire spumessive as far as balance, I went back to the book and started reading the book and found out what I was supposed to be doing as a leader, how I'm supposed to be giving Nate opportunity to minister, how I'm supposed to be giving the folks in my vine an opportunity to have their voice. See, I was doing a lot of this, I was finding my voice, I was finding how my skills, talents, and ability allowed me to minister to my folks, but what was I doing for them? And, and, and when I sat down and read the book and started seeing what I was required to do, there was a mind shift. All of a sudden, I started seeing how can I have an opportunity to develop me. And, and I was very much in touch with Eric, uh, just, just like Nate, and you know, very close and personal, I was ministering to him. But then what I started seeing is I need to step back and give Nate an opportunity to serve. Because if I'm always there serving, that's hindering his ability to serve. So these are the things that started going through my mind. And now as I started looking at rhythm and service a little differently, all of a sudden, the book of numbers came alive. Now when I first started reading numbers, it was just count this pe these many people, create this, 
you go over here, you take this, you do that, give the sacrifice, and you kind of go through it like, whoa. But all of a sudden, when I started seeing the rhythm of Yahweh, numbers came alive. It was something that I've never read before. And, and that's what's so wonderful about Yahweh's word. As he begins to grow you and develop you, as you mature in the spirit, you start seeing things in a new, fresh way. And Yahweh can, ha I'm sure he's pretty tickled when you look at it and say, oh my, I didn't see that. And he probably gets so much joy because you're fellowshipping and you're getting in rhythm. So let's start out, if we go to um, Numbers, we're going to start out at Numbers 915. So you can turn to Numbers 915. And what this is, is Numbers comes right after the book of Exodus. And the book of Exodus is talking about how Yahweh delivered Israel from Egypt. So you've got to understand what's going on here. You have a mindset of people who are always told what to do, when to get up, when to go to bed, what to do here, what to do there. So they're not in control of their lives being slaves. But all of a sudden, now we're out in the wilderness and nobody's telling us to get up. Nobody's telling us to go to bed. Nobody's telling us to do this, do that. And one of the things that start happening is when you're free, it's freedom with responsibility. So the first thing that Yahweh started doing was started setting up an environment where they had to start learning to follow instructions because they chose to follow instructions, not because they have a whip over them. And as far as meeting, we'll see a little later on, eating and things like that, they have to change their mindset. So if you go to Numbers uh, 9.15, it says, on, on the day the holy tent, the tent of agreement, and that's an important part of, of um, being in rhythm is agreement, was set up a cloud, uh, covered it. At night, the cloud covered over the holy uh, tent looked like a fire. The cloud stayed over the holy tent at all times. And at night, the cloud looked like fire. When the cloud moved from the place over the tent, the Israelites followed it. When the cloud stopped, that is the place where the Israelites camped. This was the way the Lord showed the Israelites when to move and when to stop and, and when to set up camp. While the cloud stayed over the holy tent, the people continued to camp in, the, in that same place. Sometimes the cloud would stay over the holy tent for a long time. The Israelites obeyed the Lord and did not move. Sometimes the cloud was over the holy tent for only a few days. So the people obeyed the Lord's command. They followed the cloud when it moved. Sometimes the cloud stayed only during the night and the next morning the cloud moved. And I think if you notice, there's no consistency, though we think. But what he's saying is, if I stay here for a day, you're going to stay here for a day. If I move tomorrow, I mean, you got a lot of stuff. All of a sudden, we're here at night, and we got to pick up and move the next day. I'm sure people are like, oh, come on, we just got here. But see, what it says is they obey. So he was getting them in rhythm. He was getting them to obey. And it says, sometimes the clouds stay during night, and the next morning, the cloud moved. So the people gathered their things and followed it. The cloud moved during the day or during the night. They followed it. The cloud stayed over the holy temple for two days, a month, or a year. It didn't make a difference. The people stayed at that place. They did not leave until the cloud moved. When the cloud rose from that place, they moved. And so the people obeyed the Lord's command. So, so what he was doing is taking these folks that were so used to being told what to do. Now they have a free will. Now they're out in the wilderness. But what they have to understand is now, and I don't think that they totally made the transition as we see, but now it's the Lord, Yahweh, who's leading them. Not a taskmaster, not Pharaoh from Egypt. And he's starting to give them responsibility because you've got to remember, he's taking them to the promised land. And with their mindset like it is right now, they're not going to be able to go in and take that land. He has to begin to get them in rhythm, get them in rhythm with him, get them moving as one so they can now start having that power of agreement. And that's where Yahweh commands his blessing when there's unity and agreement. Now, let's start seeing how he starts setting up uh, some... Uh, establishing the rhythm. First, he talks about instructions. So if you go to uh, through Numbers 9.15, we saw that there was instructions being given. So now through communication, if we go to Numbers 10.1, and what he does here is he talks about a silver trumpet. And what this silver trumpet is, is the way where he's setting up communication. He got to get everybody on the same page because when you say one thing, and I'm, I'm sure there's times where you might be talking to somebody and they're saying one thing and you're understanding in a totally different way. It might be because your background, it might be because you speak another language, but you may not 
Though they say the words and you're both shaking your head, they may not be getting the same agreement or the same uh, message that you're sending. So one of the things Yahweh did is made it very clear what message was going to be sent. So through communication, it says in um, 10, 1 through 4, the Lord said to Moses, make two trumpets, use silver to hammer out, make the trumpets. These trumpets will be for calling the people together and for telling them when it is time to move the camp. If you blow long blasts on both trumpets, all the people must gather together at the entrance of the meeting tent. But if you blow long blasts, only one trumpet, only the leaders will come to meet you. These are the leaders of the 12 tribes of Israel. Short blasts, and now as we go on talking about order, starting at five through six, short blasts on the trumpet will be the way to tell the people to move the camp. The first time you blow a, bl a short blast on the trumpet, the, tri uh, the tribes camping in the east side of the meeting tent must begin to move. The second time you blow a short blast on the trumpet, the tribes camping on the south side of the meeting tent will begin to move. But if you uh, want to gather the people together for a special meeting, blow the trumpet in a different way. So you can see what he's doing here. He's telling them, first of all, here's your instructions. You got to follow instructions. When the cloud moves, you move. When it stops, you stop. Then he started talking about communications, blasting on the trumpet. If you one long blast, you bring the leaders. If it's a short blast, this is the first tribe to go, the next tribe to go. And then from there, we started talking about that's the order. So now what you're starting to do is getting agreement together. But let's see, like we said, when there's no agreement, when you're not in rhythm with Yahweh, things don't always go so well. So let's go over to Numbers 11, 1 through 15. And I'm kind of probably going to paraphrase a little bit of this right here. But what, what's happening here is the fact that the Israelites start complaining. Now, Yahweh was giving them manna. Every day with the dew that comes down, they had manna, and they would actually take these manas and turn them into cake, and this was heavenly food that nobody ever saw before. But guess what? They got a little tired of manna, and they wanted some meat. And they, were, and they made their, their intentions known, and they were talking about how, much, how they wanted meat, how they wanted meat. So let me just get started. let me get to numbers 11 so what began to happen is the people started to complain and it says right here the people started complaining about their troubles the lord heard their complaints he heard these things and became angry fire from the lord burned among the people the fire burnt so uh, some of the areas at the edge of the camp so the people cried to moses for help Moving down to verse 4, the foreigners, now we've got foreigners, who had joined the Israelites began wanting other things to eat. Soon the Israelites began to complain again. The people said, we want to eat meat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt. Now we're reflecting, we're going back to Egypt. They forgot how it used to be so hard and they had taskmasters. Now they're reflecting on how wonderful it was to have fish and they had meat, chives, melon, onion. It says, but now we have lost our strength. We, we never eat anything, only this manner. And then um, moving down a little further in verse 10, Moses heard the people complaining. People from every family were sitting at their tents and complaining. The Lord became very angry, and this made Moses very upset. Now not only are the Israelites complaining, the foreigners that were with them, now Moses is starting to complain. So you can see when you're out of rhythm, it spins out of control very quickly. So Moses said, um, here it says, Moses was very upset. He asked the Lord, why did you bring this trouble on me? I'm, I am your servant. What did I do wrong? What did I do to upset you? Why did you give me the responsibility over these people? You know that I'm not their father of all these people. You know that I didn't give birth to them, but I take care of them. Like a, like, listen to this, like a nurse carrying a baby in his arms, right, in her arms. Why do you force me to do this? Now, I don't know if we get down to um, verse 14. This is where we get a lot of times. We get so frustrated with what we're called to do. It says, I can't take care of these people alone. The burden is too heavy for me. If you plan to continue giving me their troubles, kill me now. So how many people, when God has asked you to do something, and it starts getting tr tr real tough, he said, Lord, just kill me. Just take me now. Let me go home. I know you have a mansion for me. Let me just go to my mansion and get over with this. See, when things get tough and you're not in rhythm, 
Like I said, it spirals out of control and all you want to do is throw your hands up in the air and disqualify yourself. This is kind of what has happened to me on Sunday. I just had a lot of stuff going on and I don't think at that time I was quite in rhythm and I didn't ask to go home. I didn't ask him to kill me, but I'm like, come on. Doesn't Pastor Dan know I have a lot to do? He, he wants me to minister on Wednesday and then when am I going to cook the food? It was the Martha syndrome because you know I like cooking. When am I going to get to cook the food? But like I said, Yahweh said, you got this, all right? So then I said, okay, I calmed down. Now, what happens is when you have this environment, you limit what Yahweh can do. So when you're out of rhythm, when you allow complaining and the things of this world begin to creep into your life, you begin to limit the anointing in your life. So we go to uh, Mark 6.1. And this was when Yeshua had went back home. He went back to his hometown. And starting at verse 1, uh, Jesus left and went back to his hometown. His followers went with him. On the Sabbath day, Jesus taught in the synagogue. And many people heard him. They were amazed and said, where did this man get this teaching? How did he get such wisdom? Who gave it to him? And where did he get the power to do miracles? Now here, this is the point. Isn't this the carpenter's son that we know? See, oh, they're already making assumptions. They know him. It says, uh, don't we know his sisters? Don't they still live around here? So they had a problem accepting him because they already had an image of who he was and they thought they knew what they were talking about. So they already pegged him into, who is he? We know him. How can he do this? And it goes on to say right here, again, they're not in rhythm with Yahweh. It says, then Jesus said to them, oh, sorry, let me make sure I answer. and then Jesus said to them, people everywhere, uh, give honor to prophets except in their own ho own town and with own people or in his home. Jesus was not able to do miracles there except the healing of some sick people by the laying on of hand. He was surprised that the people there had no faith. Then he went on to other villages in the area that he, that he taught. So you see here, just because of the fact that we have these preconceived notions, we kind of know how things work, and, and I'll touch on it a little later on, but that's one of the things Pastor Dan was talking about on Sunday, and it's in our, our manual when you look through rhythm, is the fact that we gotta let go of the old traditions. We gotta let go of the old things that we think we know how they work, because when Yahweh moves, you can't limit him by your knowledge. And, and, and we even see later on where, where Moses, even when they, he was going to feed, well, actually was in that and I didn't touch on, but he was going to feed the meat because they were crying for meat. And one of the things that Moses said is, hey, we got 600,000 warriors. Where are you going to get meat for all these people? And the, what Yahweh said is, I'm not you. When I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Watch me. And you see, sometimes we can't figure it out in our head. So we say, how is he going to do this? And then we limit what Yahweh can do in our life the same way here. We know you. Aren't you a carpenter? How are you going to do miracles? We saw you when you were young. Who gave you this wisdom? How did you get this? You can't let people disqualify you. You can't disqualify yourself. So sometimes we just got to let go of what we think we know and allow the new wine to come into new wineskins. Amen? And um, going on, it's, uh, one of the things that, that um, Pastor said, and this is coming directly out of the my deeper life manual it says spiritual rhythm is absolutely necessary we must learn to move as one we must learn to lay down our own desires to carry our familiar traditions forward uh, tr familiar traditions forward and agree upon a simple framework that allows us to serve one another simple and effectively day after day until we reach the population of the earth through the acts of kindness. So that's really what the foundation of rhythm is, is for us to let go of the old and begin to come together and work with one another in unity and then to begin to serve until we reach all the population of the earth. And that's probably one of the reasons why we've been hindered all this time and have not re reached all the population because if you look at the numbers, it's only supposed to take 22 years to do that. And I think it's been a tad more than 22 years since Yeshua had left. So we gotta get something right, amen? So, um, now one of the things that Pastor said on Sunday's master class, which kind of I pulled out, it says rhythm, he said rhythm is probably the most important piece of what we do because it is the area that we must follow instructions the most. However, we cannot move together as a team when we have been taught that way, that, no, that we're not a body. And, and in a lot of churches, we're not taught the unity of the body. We're taught 
that this is what we're doing and they're doing that over there. And we'll see how that caused conflict in a moment. But it's just the way we've been taught. It's very hard for us to see ourselves as a body totally and complete and coming together in unity. And that's what the rhythm in my deeper life is supposed to allow us to do. Now, he's not telling you to do with 30, 40,000 people. He says you have three people that you serve and you come into rhythm with them and with Yahweh. And as you come into rhythm with them, then you teach them how to come into rhythm with the three that they serve. And then they come into rhythm with the three that they serve. And that's how we all start moving in unity, getting in rhythm with Yahweh and being where we need to be, when we need to be there, doing the things we need to do. And that's when we're in the best position to be blessed. Amen. So if we go to um, Mark 9, 38. OK, so this is just going to be a little example of when we've been taught that we're not all a body and how we react to when people are doing something else. Let me see. Mark 9. Give me one moment. 38. And what this here is, Yeshua was, um, had empowered the disciples. He had just taught a little bit about, about serving. And now all of a sudden some disciples come running to him and John, here's John. Then John said, teacher, we saw a man using your name to force demons out of someone. He's not one of us. So, he told, so we told him to stop because he does not belong to our group. Okay, and how does Yeshua respond? Yeshua said, don't stop him. Whoever uses my name to do powerful things will not do so, will not soon say bad things about me. Whoever is not against us is with us. I can assure you that anyone who helps by giving a drink of water because of you belongs to the Messiah. We will. Well, but you see what he was saying there is just because he's not in our group, but he's using in rhythm, using Yahweh's name or Yeshua's name. Don't stop him. And see, as this begins to grow, you've got to understand it's not only going to be here. The people that can fit in faith exchange. It's going to be people across the globe that are doing the same thing that we're doing. And we can't turn around and say, hey, stop it. You're not part of our group. We got this. But what you see is you can't put Yahweh in a box. But what he's saying is if they're in rhythm, then they're with you. Amen. If they're in rhythm, Yahweh is using them. And we come together as a body. But we got to understand that we got to stay in rhythm. Amen. And then if you are uh, one other example of that, if you go back to Numbers 11, and this was after that little tirade that Moses went through talking about these aren't my people. And he was saying, OK, this is 1124. You need to help me out. And so what Yahweh did was he told him that he needed to. Oh, let me just. He needed to go ahead and gather 70, uh, 70 elders to come to the tent, because what he was going to do is he was going to impart. The, his spirit upon them. But there were two people that didn't make it to the tent. And then you have someone come running up to, uh, to Moses said, but the Lord said, Moses, don't, don't limit my power. This is what I was telling you. Uh, he says, you will see that I can do what I say I can do. So Moses went out to speak with the people. He told them that what the Lord had, told, had said. Then he gathered 70 of the elders together and told them to stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses and put on the 70 elders some of the same spirit that was on Moses. And after the spirit came down on them, they began to prophesy. But there was only uh, this, but this was the only time they ever did this. Then two of the elders, Eldad and Medad, did not go out to the tent. Their names were on the list of elders, but they stayed in the camp. But the spirit also came on them and they began to prophesy in the camp. And then a young man ran and said, told Moses, the man said, El, uh, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, which is his, his right hand person, what he said was, Moses, sir, you must stop them. And uh, Joshua had been um, Moses' helper, it says, since he was a boy. But Moses answered, are you afraid that the people would think that I'm not the leader? I wish all the Lord's people were able to prophesy. I wish the Lord would put his spirit on them. Then Moses and the leaders 
of Israel went back to the camp. And what I saw there is what he was saying is, stop them. I wish you all would grow up and be leaders. I wish you all had the spirit and then I wouldn't have to think of you like babies where you're crying about wanting meat and you're crying about wanting to go back to Egypt. But see, when Yahweh starts putting his spirit on them, that's when we begin to develop. That's when we begin to grow. And when we're walking in maturity, you're not intimidated by the fact that Yahweh is using somebody else. That doesn't threaten your leadership because he's raising up people. And this brought me back to what Pastor Dan is doing. I've been in many churches and I've seen a lot of pastors say they want to develop people, but it's just one way. It goes to that pastor and nobody else. Every decision, everything that's done goes to the pastor. And I was talking to my mother, and I won't mention the church, but she was even saying her pastor used to go on vacation and always come back on Sunday because he just didn't trust anybody else to give that message. But then he started developing other people the same way that Pastor Dan is doing. But what is now starting to do with my mind is starting to change my mindset. One of the things he said is uh, myself and a few other people who are going to be speaking, pick six dates to speak next year. What did that make me do? Make a commitment in advance. Okay, now I got a commitment. Now there's an expectation on me. So all of a sudden my mindset is like, okay, Yahweh, we got to get this. I mean, I'm looking to you. What do you need me to do? And then one of the things he said that he wanted us to develop an outline and send it to him before we speak. What is that making you do? It's making you be committed to prepare and to get before Yahweh and to begin to allow him to speak to you. And I sent him an outline in this message as well. What are you going to be talking about? And it also gives them a, a chance to kind of give you a little correction that if you're a little off base and maybe you didn't understand something, he can minister to you and say, well, here's where you correct your thinking. But just in the fact that he's deciding to develop us has given me an opportunity to begin to become a leader, starting with my deeper life in the group and then other things that go on. And that now free Pastor Dan to go out and do other things that Yahweh is calling him to do. But he's not intimidated. He's not threatened because he's seeing the consistency in the spirit, the transferring of the spirit, the deeper life tools. All these things are bringing us back into rhythm with Yahweh. And just like Moses, he wasn't intimidated because he knew that the spirit of Yahweh was on them. And same thing with pastor. If he knows we're in rhythm, then there's no need for him to be worried because Yahweh has it under control. And that's what he's starting to develop. As a matter of fact, I think there was Glocko and, and, and there was a couple other people that he also pointed out at the master class that he said, I think it was Marie and, and a couple other people that he wanted to speak. So what he's starting to do is create an environment where people are starting to develop their voice. So, so much we're used to being in church and the pastor's talking and we don't say anything. So we don't know what's going on in our mind and, and when we speak something is in line with Yahweh so when there's an opportunity to talk with somebody around you you're intimidated you don't want to speak because you don't know if you're going to say the right thing but when your voice begins to get developed and you're used to hearing Yahweh's voice then you're in a situation he speaks to you and you speak only the things you hear your father say you do only the things you see your father do and you have the success that Yeshua had and that's what he said we're supposed to be Yeshua here in the earth realm but if you can't say anything how are they gonna know if there's no one there to preach amen so that's how we're being developed now uh, moving on okay it says um, the other one, which, which I'm not going to get too much in, into there, but I'll just kind of touch upon if you if you look at Mark 7, 1 through 23, what that is, is just going through is when Yeshua was talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And one of the things he was telling them is you got all these because it was they were talking about how can your disciples eat with unwashed hands? And he was like, unwashed hands. He said, it's not what goes in you that defiles you it's what comes out of you that defiles you. And then he went on to say, but what you have done is you've taken the traditions of your father and you carry them further, for, uh, forward at the expense of what the commandments of Yahweh is. And what you've done is you made the commands of Yahweh of none effect. You see, when we hold on to these traditions, when we do things the way we always were taught and thought we should do them, it may not be in rhythm with Yahweh. And when it's not in rhythm with Yahweh, just like complaining, you get yourself off mark. You limit what Yahweh can do in your life. And then after all the complaining and being out of rhythm, we have a need and we wonder why Yahweh hasn't brought something along. Because we limit what he's able to do. So what we need to do is, as pastors always talk about, is we're training for the day of adversity. We're training for these things. How are we training? We're using the tools to get in rhythm. 
See, when you don't have the adversity coming your way, it's the time that you need to prepare. One of the things um, John F. Kennedy said was, the time to prepare the roof is when the sun is shining. You don't wait until it's raining to all of a sudden go up there and try to patch up the leak. You got to do it when it's not raining. The time to believe Yahweh for healing you from cancer is not when you have cancer, it's when you have the sniffle and you say, I don't get sick. So by the time you get there, it's, an, it's a foregone conclusion, I don't get sick, all right? So um, now after that, it says that we are called to serve. So we go to Mark 9, and I just want to touch upon on how that is such a foundational part of what we do is serving. In Mark chapter 9, verse 33. And this is going back to where the, the, the um, disciples were going back and forth. And they were trying to figure out. Let me see. One, nine, 33, they were trying to figure out who was the greatest amongst them. So what Jesus said right here when he was addressing his disciples. He said Jesus, uh, Jesus and his followers went to Capernaum. They went into a house and Jesus said to them. I heard you arguing on the way on the way here today, what were you arguing about? Now, you know he knows, but he's giving them a chance to stop and think, all right? And it says, but the followers did not answer because the argument on the road was about which one of them was the greatest. Now, before I go on, do you think that's being in rhythm with Yahweh, or do you think that's taking you out of rhythm with Yahweh? And what are they arguing about? Who's the greatest? And you're out of rhythm. So you're definitely not the greatest, right? Do you see how your mind gets twisted? So he goes on to say here, uh, Jesus sat down and called the 12 uh, apostles to him. And he said, whoever wants to be the most important must make others more important than them. They must serve everyone else. So what he's saying is, if you really want to be in rhythm with Yahweh, serve. Serve. That's how you get in rhythm. Not trying to say I'm the greatest, but what it is is humbling yourself and serving. Because Yeshua, and we saw where he was washing the feet of the disciples, he being, you know, the son of Yahweh, is down here giving an example of him humbling himself and washing his feet, uh, the feet of his disciples. Amen. And then uh, if you go to Philippians 1.27. And, and Philippians 1.27 says, be, sh uh, be sure you live as God's people in a way that honors God. God's uh, news of, of Christ. Then if I come and visit you or if I'm away from you, I will hear good things about you. I will know that you stand together with the same purpose and that you work together like a team to help others believe the good news. And you see what he's saying here is like 12 simple thoughts. We're all called to do great things, but we can't do it alone. So don't think you got to be a lone ranger. And he's saying work together as a team. What are you doing? You're spreading the good news about Yeshua coming to uh, to save us. And then he goes on to say, and you will not be afraid of those who are against you. All of and believe the good news. And you will not be afraid of all those who are against you. All of uh, this is proof from God that you are being saved and that your enemies will be lost. Be blessed. Uh, God has blessed you in ways that uh, in ways that serve Christ. He allows you to believe in Christ. So Paul is admonishing us to come together as a team, to work as a body, to get in rhythm with Yahweh. Amen. So as Pastor was saying, that is the most important thing. And getting in rhythm again requires that. We follow instructions. And if you go to 1 Corinthians, and again, just talking a little bit more about being called to serve and working together as a, as a body. And remember, a lot of this stuff we have not been taught in church. It's just the way these the books are hoarded on the iPad. I apologize. Okay, so we're just going to 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. And he says, Brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, I beg all of you to agree with each other. 
You should, be, uh, you should not be divided into different groups. Be completely joined together against, uh, again, with the same kind of thinking and the same purpose. If you're seeing this theme here, what is my deeper life? What are the principles all about? The tools that bring us back into rhythm with Yahweh, to make us have a common language, to have us agreed upon things that we are doing, which is giving a pledge, reading the books of the Bible. And then when we get together, what it allows us to do is work together as a body and to allow Yahweh to work through us. So when you're divided, when you're not in rhythm, you're holding back the team. And as Pastor said, even something as simple as just not reading the books of the Bible that we're called to read in a month is taken away from the team. So these are all the things to really admonish us to really take it serious. And I encourage you, and I've been saying it a while, if you haven't gone back to the My Deeper Life book, go back, start reading it. Take that task that you really want to be in rhythm. Because like I said on, on Sunday, a lot of times we have a lot of I hear somebody talking up here about using the balance scale and how they're using the tools, and then you hear Pastor Dan talk about it, but because you don't know the core values behind them, then you kind of just go through the exercise, go through the motion and use them, but you're not getting the full impact of what those tools are doing. And when you get that appreciation is when you read the core concept, and now you see exactly what the tools are bringing you to, amen? And it says that um, uh, just in case we have lost sight of, of what we're called to do, which I know no one here has, but in, um, it says we're all called to reach the world. And this is what the whole premise of My Deeper Life is, in 22 generations to touch every person on this earth. And I'm not going to turn through it, but in Mark 13.10, it says the gospel must be preached to all nations. And in Mark 16.15, it says go into all the nations and preach the gospel to all creation. And again, as I was saying, because I'm going back to a lot of the principles of my deeper life and what it's all about, I'm starting to have a shift in my mindset. I'm starting to see things a little differently. I'm not looking to be taught as so much as how can I take what I'm being taught and begin to empower the people that I'm called to serve. And not only stopping there, but how can I create an environment where they now are empowered to go out and touch the people that they're being served. And I think when we start getting that mindset is when we start seeing a lot of things change. And then in the environment, um, it, again, it, it, it's, it's set up to very easily allow people to accept being a part of the vine. And what was so funny, and I'll just with Sharice, is she was up here talking and she had invited a person. She, very new to the deeper life and my wife has been serving her she's been following instructions doing the things that she needs to do so she was standing up here and she said pastor dan said well who are you serving well i'm not serving anything on right now and what did her friend say latine said you're serving me all right so the vibe just grew just like that why because it was an environment that was created she didn't have to do anything but get her into rhythm and as soon as she was in rhythm she saw exactly what's going on and she wasn't grafting into the vine so what you start to see is when we get in rhythm all the wonderful things that Yahweh is going to be able to do in our life but like the children of Israel when you just came out of bondage and you're complaining about the meat and you're complaining about this you're complaining about that and maybe your team is not cooperating maybe they're talking about they don't want you to serve them maybe they're saying why do we got to get on a conference call why do we got to go to a master class don't you know I have something to do after church and and then you start saying, well, I'm tired of the people I'm serving. Yahweh, send me some more people. I'm sick of them. And then all of a sudden, you start seeing that whole cycle begin to spiral out of control. And now that part of the vine is being impacted. That part of the vine is being stunted as far as growth. But the sad part about it is not limited to that vine. It's impacting the whole vine because all those talents, gifts, resources, everything that's in that part of the vine is being cut off. Why? Because we know that Yeshua is the vine and his father is the husbandman and anybody who's not producing fruit, what happens? They get cut off. And then those who are producing fruit, they kind of get snipped too. But what is that? So they can produce more fruit. Amen. And I just think that that's where the correction is beginning to come. So now as we begin to, to wind up, um, one of the things that it says in this part of rhythm is we got to put this as a priority. We have to make this a priority. And one of the ways I see that Pastor Dan has helped me make it a priority, you know how Yahweh, he's not going to force you to do something. 
but he knows how to create the environment to get you to do it, right? <laughs> so Pastor Dan is not forcing me to make a mind shift, but he knows how to create an environment that kind of makes me feel like I got to shift my mind. Because one of the things he's saying is, again, I told you before, prepare by commit, committing to date. He told us to submit an outline. And then he wants us now to coordinate with other people. And it's so beautiful how this is beginning to happen because when we first had our first eight minutes to speak up here about a year ago, I didn't talk to anybody. I think I spoke to Mike very briefly, and I didn't talk to Glory. I didn't speak to anybody else. And we all came up here, and we gave our eight minutes. Then we had pastor's appreciation. It was a beautiful thing. Everybody started jumping in. Everybody started saying, this is what I'm going to do. And then as we did that, everything began to flow. The order, the structure just became so apparent because we knew who was going to say what. And it's just like nobody was, nobody was saying exactly what somebody else said, but there was such a nice dovetail because, and as you saw, we had Gloria. She was talking about what appreciation was. And then after Gloria, then we had Drea. She said, well... I want to talk about value. I mean, it's about appreciate, but it's about, so we're starting to talk about appreciation, value. And then Mike said, and he was in Virginia, someplace else, through email said, well, I want to talk about this. And he kind of touched upon what both of them were saying, but then he went to the next level. So we started seeing how that orchestration started to happen. We started seeing the rhythm. And what he wants us to do a little bit more is focus on listening to what the other speakers are saying and then begin to kind of take and incorporate what they're saying into our message, which is why I took what Pastor was talking about on Sunday, rhythm. And then I started incorporating this. And then what we're going to start seeing is pastor steps away because he's called to do some apostolic things outside the church. You're going to hear the same message. You're going to hear the same rhythm. You're going to hear the same principles. It's not like, as I was sharing with my mother, sometimes in churches, it's like when the pastor's not preaching, nobody wants to come to church. You bring your guests and it's like, oh, I thought the pastor was preaching. Oh, yeah, well, uh, oh, you'll come next week when pastor's preaching, right? But it's not going to be that way here because it's the same spirit. We're in the same rhythm and Yahweh is speaking the same thing. We have same tools and we're all going to teach each other to grow. And he continues to develop people. And that's when I believe we're going to be prepared for when all the folks start coming in. How, whenever that's going to be, we're going to be prepared. The same way the children of Israel weren't prepared when they came out of Egypt to go in and take the promised land. There was some instruction. There's some things that had to take place before they were ready to go into the promised land. I think with this, though we may not see a lot of people because we don't see all the people pastors touching outside of here, but we got to get ourselves together because if we're not together and people start coming, then we're paying for with bad habits. We're teaching people how to get out of rhythm and things are going to go bad really quick. And then uh, other thing he said is stay focused on the My Deeper Life concept because one thing you'll find is it's daily disciplines. It's the things that you do every single day. And one of the things is one guy, Jim Rowan, said is it's easy to do, but guess what? It's easy not to do. It becomes a choice. Success is really just a lot of things that you do right over a period of time. Failure is just a lot of things that you do wrong over a period of time. It's one and the same, but you just gotta make the choice. Are you gonna do the right thing or are you gonna do the wrong thing? And the right thing here is the My Deeper Life tools. Because when you're out of control, you're out of focus, like I was on finances, I can go back to the balance scale and take a look at my entire life. And now start saying, okay, what's stopping me in this area? What would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? And then begin to give me a broader perspective of my life. It also, with the nine fruits of the spirit, if I feel myself not walking in love, I have a way to start checking that and say, I need to walk in love. And I can start picking out a fruit of the spirit every single day. So these tools are all designed to bring us right back into rhythm, which is why he wants us to focus on the tools. And not to depend upon Pastor Dan. That was one of the things that he was saying, not to be so dependent on Pastor Dan for everything to move. He touches it, it moves. He doesn't touch it, it stops. What we need to do is we need to get to the place where we're now imbibing that spirit. We're in rhythm with Yahweh. He's communicating to us, we're saying yes, which is one of the principles, say yes. Uh, we get to, we get to, what does that mean? Well, if you got a talent, you can't hold it back. I'm tall. Well, guess what? I get to get things on the top shelf. I can't get upset because I'm tall and people are going to ask me to get things on the top shelf. But if Yahweh is giving you something, he's giving you for a purpose, not to say for my own personal convenience. But if you have it and he asks you to use it, you get to. So that's why he wants us to stay on all these principles, because then we stay in rhythm with Yahweh. And just finally, just on one of the things that came to my mind as I close for the second time is the fact that 
there's a, a, a phrase that really stuck with me. It says, when your mind is stretched by a new, or when your mind is stretched by a new concept, it never regains its original dimensions. And what I'm seeing with the My Deeper Life, as our mind is being stretched, we see things differently. We don't see it with the same eyes. Just the way I went back to numbers, and it was, just came to life, but I was looking through the tool of rhythm or the core value of rhythm. So as, I, as I'm instructed, as I go forward, reading out of, out of the monthly readings, now I'm reading with a purpose. This may not be what Yahweh's called you to do, but it's what he called me to do. But just being in rhythm, I'm hearing his voice. And I'm, allow, I'm now allowed to follow instructions. And then as we follow instructions, we qualify ourselves to go to the next level. So hopefully you got something out of that, amen? Yes. Well, your mind, <laughs> is your mind stretched by a new concept, never regains its original dimensions. And I'm so glad that Yahweh is stretching us in the right way. Amen? So thank you very much. <laughs> so I think at this point right now, what we're going to do is we have a chance to follow instructions because Yahweh says he loves a champ cheerful and prompt to do it giver and this gives us an opportunity now to position ourselves to be blessed because we've been taught here that there are several types of giver there are those who give their tithes and your tithe and offering is 10 percent of what Yahweh blesses you with and with that he opens up the window and, and pours out a blessing that's so abundant you won't be able to receive it so you're under open window but also, he rebukes the devourer and your name's sake. Nations will call you blessed. So there's a blessing on being a tither. Then after the tithes comes your offering. And what he says is that's where you get the increase, the 30, 60, and 100 fold. But you've got to give your tithes first before you give above and beyond your tithes. Then we have the first fruit where you bless the man and woman of God. And what he does is now blesses and makes holy that stream of income. And then if you give to the poor, he said that he's going to give back to you. So these are the things that we're being taught. So when we're asked to give, we can be excited because we understand what the purpose of giving is. And we get in rhythm with the way. Amen. So I'm going to give you a moment to go ahead and um, fill out your envelopes. And then you can serve the people. Amen. Now, don't expect me to stand up and sing. That is not my gifting. So we're just going to take a moment to give you a chance to go ahead and fill out your envelopes. Okay. Do we have anybody to serve? I mean, you can go ahead and serve them. <laughs> don't worry your seed will be blessed I'll go ahead and pray when we're done <laughs> we to put in there. hallelujah we thank you Yahweh we just come before you right now with this seed we just thank you that you're blessing those who give it we thank you that you see their heart and that you said that you would open up a window and pour out a blessing so abundant that they won't have room to receive it. I decree that they are prospering even as their soul prospers, that they're walking in health, that their family is whole. We thank you that they are successful, that they are being uh, given favor and that doors are opening up for them. We thank you that when the enemy comes in like a flood, you're causing him to flee in seven different ways and you're raising up a standard. We thank you that everything that they put their hands to will be blessed. We thank you all things that working together for good for those who love you for they are called according to your purpose we thank you right now that you see the needs of each and every individual and we thank you that you're going to bring 
allowing workers of righteousness to come across their path and begin to bless them. We thank you right now that this seed is holy and that we give it on to you and, and, and just worship and reverence it. We thank you, Father, for all that you're doing in our life. We thank you for our pastors, Dan and Ann Stratton. We ask you to bless them and continue to give them good success. We thank you in the precious name of your dear son, Yeshua HaMashiach. We give